Hello folks, uh, welcome to this first video on hypothesis testing for the proportion of a binomial distribution. Um, this is the, the first of six videos on this topic. It, it really is a, a big topic uh, and uh, you'll probably need quite a lot of, of help with it. So hopefully these uh, six videos will help. Um, the first one, we're just going to talk about what a hypothesis test is. Uh, there are then two different approaches. There's critical regions approaches and p-values. Um, your, your teacher will, will guide you as to which you are going to do first. Um, then later on we'll have a look at some two-tailed tests and finally um, a slight alteration uh, where we have to find the closest possible to a significance level. So uh, on to this first bit, uh, what is a hypothesis test? Um, so <clears throat> I want you to imagine that we've got this spinner uh, that's used in a game, so four coloured spinner, um, and I expect uh, most people's assumption would be that it's a fair spinner, i.e. that every colour has got uh, a quarter um, chance of being selected. Uh, so in this case, we could say the probability of getting this green, as we've got here, is one quarter. Um, but what if I suspect that the spinner is biased um, and that we are less likely to get green than the other colours? So there might be a reason for suspecting this. Perhaps I didn't get as many when I tried it. Um, so what I'm suspecting here is that the probability of getting green is less than one quarter. Uh, and we might want to actually test whether that is true. Uh, to do it, we're, we'd probably have a go at spinning it lots of times. So we might spin the spinner 20 times to see what we get. Um, if, if it was a fair spinner, then how many greens would we expect to get? Well, I'm hoping you would agree. Uh, there's four different colours on here, 20 times. If it was a, spare, a fair sorry, spinner, we would expect to get five greens. Um, but how few a number of greens would provide evidence that the spinner is indeed biased. Um, so would three greens be few enough? So if we only got three greens out of 20, would that be enough for you to say, yeah, I think I think we're, this spinner is biased, uh, the property of getting green is less than a quarter. Um, or what, what about two or one? Would we need those sorts of numbers? Or indeed, would it, would it only convince you if we had zero greens? Um, so a hypothesis test basically is used to make decisions similar to that. Uh, there's loads of vocabulary that's really important to this topic, so I just want to run through some of that. Uh, first of all, the uh, something called a random variable. So a random variable, as the name suggests, it's something that varies. It's a variable and it, and it varies by chance. It's random. So it's usually donated by X, sorry, denoted by X, uh, and here in this example, uh, it would be the number of greens that are spun. So X would be the random variable that is the number of greens that are spun. Another bit of vocabulary is what we call the null hypothesis. Uh, the null hypothesis is always denoted uh, H0 uh, or H0. Um, and it is always the default state. Um, it's kind of what we would assume the case to be uh, without any change. So in this example, our, our assumption is, is going to be that the spinner is fair. Um, then we have the alternative hypothesis. The, the uh, alternative hypothesis is denoted H1. All right. Uh, and that notation is always used. H0 null hypothesis, H1, alternative hypothesis. Um, the alternative hypothesis is the suspected alternative state. So back to our example, in this example, I suspect that the spinner is biased against green. So my alternative hypothesis would be that the probability of getting green is actually less than a quarter. Uh, and then we have something called the test statistic. The test statistic is the actual result of the random variable in our experiment. So we decided we might spin the spinner 20 times. The test statistic would just be how many greens we actually got. OK, so four bits of vocabulary there. Um, what I've got here is a graph um, that has uh, that shows our random variable. So hopefully you're happy that our random variable in this example is going to be binomial. Uh, the spinner might be green or it might not be. 
Uh, assuming that it is fair, then the probability of getting green we know is a quarter and we've decided we're going to spin it 20 times. So hopefully you're happy that our random variable would take this distribution here, binomial with n20 p equals a quarter. And what I've done here is uh, draw out the graph that shows the probability of getting different numbers of x, different x values. So for instance, um, we can see that uh, the probability of getting five greens is the highest one. And that, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because we said that uh, we would expect to get five greens if it was fair. All right. Uh, it's still very likely that we might get four or six there either side but as we get less and less the probabilities get lower and lower um, going this way as we get higher and higher they get lower and lower the probabilities get lower and lower as well and and in fact if you think about it these probabilities should carry on to 20 really shouldn't they there's a there's a chance that we get 20 greens but by the time we get to 12 you can see that the probability has become so small that we can't we can hardly see it so a bit more vocabulary um, down here are, uh, is the idea of getting very few greens, so perhaps zero greens, one green. Our critical region uh, is going to be, for this example, somewhere down here. Getting very, very few greens is what we would look for to provide evidence that the null hypothesis, that the spinner is fair, is not true. So the critical region is uh, a a selection of values of our random variable x, uh, where if the test statistic falls within the critical region, then there is evidence to suggest that the null hypothesis is not true. Okay, so in this case, if we had very few greens, then that would provide evidence that it's not true, that the spinner is not fair. We always talk about whether we think the null hypothesis is true or not. Um, we also need to know how many values down here we need. And to do that, uh, we need to know what's called the significance level. Now, the significance level um, is something you'll usually be given in the question. Um, and basically, uh, as it says, we want the sum of the probabilities of the values in the critical region uh, to be less than our significance level. So significance levels are often 5% or 1%. So if it was 5%, we would need the values uh, in the critical region down here. We would need their probabilities to add up to less than 5%. Um, the significance level is actually the, the probability that we reject the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. So there is a chance that we do reject the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. Um, if the problem was not about a spin-up, let's say it was to do with some medical needs, then we probably want to reduce that probability. So we're more likely to use a 1% uh, significance level for important ideas like that. Uh, one last thing, the actual significance level. Well, we've said that we want these probabilities to add up to less than the significance level, so less than 5% or maybe less than 1%. The actual significance level is just what the sum of these probabilities actually are. Okay, so back to our uh, example test statistic. Um, I've said is the number of greens that we got. So here we've got our results of the 20 spins and you can see that we've got two greens. So our test statistic here would be x equals 2. So that is pretty low. The question is, is this few enough to provide evidence that the spinner is biased against green? And that is basically what we would use a hypothesis test for. All right. So if you watch uh, some of the later videos on critical regions, p-values, we'll look at how we actually judge whether that is few enough. OK, I uh, hope that helps you uh, get an idea and a feel for hypothesis tests. Thank you.